The president is also asking Congress for more funding to aid Ukraine. This comes as Russian President Vladimir Putin has vowed to retaliate against any country that supports Ukraine's resistance to his invasion. President Biden rebuffed that threat, saying the U.S. will not stop helping Ukraine until Russian troops leave the country. And joining us from a secure location in western Ukraine is a Ukrainian international legionnaire, Malcolm Nance. He is also a 20-year Navy veteran. Malcolm, first, thank you for your service and love everything that you're about. Can you tell us a little bit about the International Legion and how they're contributing in this war? Well, as you know, on February 27th, President Zelensky made a call for anyone who wanted to come and join the Ukrainian armed forces and defend democracy against the Russian aggression to make their way to Ukraine, uh, join the Ukrainian army. And the vehicle for that was to join the International Legion for the Territorial Defense of Ukraine. That is the official name of the organization. It is not a uh, militia. It is actually an element of the Ukrainian army. It is made up of foreign troops uh, from 52 nations. And believe me, I've met uh, quite a few uh, from countries I would have been quite surprised to hear from. But they all have one thing in common. Uh, there's no money in it. I mean, they make $630 a month, so they're not mercenaries. This is about the old saying that if you're going to fight an enemy, don't fight because of the person that you hate that's in front of you. Fight for the things that you love that are behind you. And that's what they're doing. They are on the side of the Ukrainian people to fight against this Russian aggression, which is blatant. And even worse, it is mass murdering civilians in this country. That is why every man and woman in the Legion is here. Malcolm, can you explain to our viewers your ties to the region? And, you know, you touched a little bit on this right now, why other people are joining the fight. But you personally, why did you decide to do this? Well, I spent about a month uh, before the invasion here doing an analysis of the Russian order of battle. Uh, that's the forces that they were aligning around Ukraine. I drove the invasion routes. We did an analysis of the potential invasion routes. And it became really clear to me very early on, Russia was not playing this time. They were going to invade this country. Uh, I went down to the Donetsk battlefront, uh, down at the Joint Task Force area. And while I was there, I met people that I had known. Uh, from the Defense Language Institute, the school that I had went to, uh, and, you know, uh, two female translators. And within the week after, you know, on D-Day, the day of the invasion, we were getting messages from them down at the battlefront saying they were being hit with hundreds of rounds of artillery and that they were likely not going to survive the next 24 hours. That struck me hard. But what struck me the most was their resilience in the face of it. They were saying, you know, we, we took this job. We knew that being down here, we were at risk. We're willing to die for our country. And at that point, I said, OK, that's it. I've had enough. You know, I've, I've done a lot of things in my life. Uh, I've I spent a lot of time in the armed forces, in the intelligence community, uh, and then became a uh, defense analyst, uh, you know, in, in major media and a writer. But that is not what this calling is about. This is about helping your friends. This is about helping a people who are under siege, where their entire existence as a Ukrainian people, Ukrainian language, Ukrainian culture has been said by Vladimir Putin himself that he is going to eliminate it. And we've already seen signs of that uh, in the occupied areas. They've taken out over 5 million Ukrainian citizens and moved them into Russia. They're leveling the city of Mariupol like they did in Grozny, Chechnya, because they intend to repopulate it with ethnic Russians. This is ethnic cleansing. Uh, we, as a nation of the West in this country, which has had nine democratic elections, there's no Nazis in sight, they have a Jewish president, and they just want to be part of the West, the world that we are all familiar with, and Russia invaded to stop that. So that's what we're really here to fight for. We're here to help defend these people with their own um, self-determination. Malcolm Nance, not just talking the talk, but walking the walk. Thank you, Indeed. Malcolm.